we are going to be removing this turret basket and extracting some broken screws um, from the turret ring. This turret center chute and basket are kind of flippy floppy. There's only two screws holding this stuff together. Um, that's pretty bad. Uh, the other four or five screws have broken off in the turret ring. Um, so we're going to need to do some work on this. They have some uh, issues with the interlock probe. <clears throat> it really can't hold a solid adjustment if the turret center chute is flippy flopping around. So we're going to start, if I can swing you guys over that way. Right here, we've got a couple, well, this one's only got one bolt in it. It should be two. Um, you'll need a 7 16th wrench to loosen those clamping bolts. So let's go ahead and do that. Right there. Plenty loose. I like to take a hammer and a punch and just tap the rod out of the mount. Almost there. I moved my fingers out of the way. All right, that one's free. There is another one on the opposite side. I'll swing that over. I don't really want to remount all the camera and the lighting and stuff, but just trust me, it's going to be the same thing on the other side. On this machine, there are no clamping bolts. Uh, that's unfortunate. Well, We'll see if we can find some when we put it back together. I'm going to rotate the turret a little bit so that I don't have anything in my way while I'm swinging the hammer and the punch over here. Line up. Why is this not going anywhere? There we go. Almost. There's that. All right. Oh, crap. I forgot the Allen wrenches. We need some Allen wrenches to take those screws out. These ones have been modified. They're not the OEM little uh, 5 sixteenths hex head. These are Allen wrenches. You stay there. I'll be right back. I'm not going very far. Toolbox is only a couple lanes away. There we go. At least I didn't park it on the other side of the building. All right, coming back in. Let's reposition. You guys get a bit, little bit better view of what's going on here. Um, let's move this light. Really like these little stick-up lights. <laughs> Your turret's gonna have underglow now. That would be cool. Battery powered LED lighting in here. <laughs> Mood lighting for your pin setters. <laughs> I might mess around someday. That day is not today. We have broken bolts to extract. Let's not get too distracted. All right, normally there's going to be like six bolts holding this thing in. Uh, we're down to two. So that saves us a little bit of time anyways. <clears throat> I'm gonna rotate the turret a little more. I want the five chute pointed straight towards the front of the pin setter. Just like that. Let's see if you guys are still in. 
Yeah, well, just for the sake of it, let's uh, move some of this stuff around. So you guys can kind of get a little bit better of an idea of what's going on here. We're going to remove the bolt here, the top pivot for the interlock probe. We can't take this out in this position. I'm just going to move it so you guys can see what I'm doing a little bit better. Uh, should be 5 sixteenths and 3 eighths for the nut. Uh, dueling speed wrenches here. It's double fast. You use two speed wrenches, you go twice as fast. Right? I don't know. All right. And then the interlock probe is actually spring urge rearward. We need to take that spring off. Let's set it aside somewhere, not uh, inside of the circuit box. I'm going to keep the bolt and the nut with the interlock probe. We're going to go backwards a little bit so that we can get this center chute pointed straight towards the front of the machine again. Right there. All right, so that interlock probe, we're just going to let it hang there. <coughs> Turret center chute, we're going to push it backwards, rotate about 90 degrees, and just work it out of this opening. No fuss, no muss. You don't have to take your pin release lever out. I mean, if you've got the parts and the time to rebuild it or you've got a rebuilt one already in there, this is a great opportunity to do that. I don't have a rebuilt pin release lever. And I'm not sure they've got one in the shop. And that is not the issue we're really focusing on today. We're not having any problems with the pin release lever. However, we are having problems with the interlock probe adjustment staying where it needs to stay because of a flippy floppy turret center chute and basket. All right, to get the basket out, we're gonna push that towards the rear of the machine and lift the front side. And I'm stuck on drop lights. Else am I? Oh, they've got these high-rise turret wires. Hold on, new strategy. We've got low-rise turret wires here. These are all higher-rise turret wires. Um, let's rotate the basket. <sighs> yeah, rotate the basket so the uh, low-rise turret wires are on the back. High-rise turret wires are on the front. We're almost there. Oh, the struggle is real today. We're hitting flashlights. We're hitting. Gravity is coming into effect here. I would like for you to come out, please. I am asking nicely. Still stuck on high rise trail wires. Where there's a will, there's a way. My name is not Will. <laughs> oh my goodness. Well, maybe we will be removing some turret wires here. Because I'm not having any luck. Normally, you don't have to remove turret wires. Normally this thing will come out real easy. All right, well, let's stop fiddle fucking around. We'll just take off the whole halo, right? Should be half inch and I don't have half inch with me. Return to the toolbox. Pick some stuff up here before uh, I forget and lose it. Like 
belt loop caught on the bolt sticking out. Help, I'm stuck. Hmm. Every day is a struggle sometimes. It's how you deal with the situation that determines your character. You're gonna get mad, throw a temper tantrum, or are you gonna figure out another way to get it done? I'm more of the figure out another way kind of person. Move you guys down a little bit. So on the front of the halo, there are two supports that mount to the turret frame. We are going to remove both of these bolts and we'll take the halo and the basket out all together. There's one bolt. Yeah, I'm usually pretty lucky getting this thing out with uh, without having to take the halo out, but today was not that day. bolt was a little longer than I thought it was. Okay, that one's out. Alright, halo and basket. The whole thing, you are coming with me. We're going to set you down in front of the rake board. Come on. See how much easier that was? Instead of trying to struggle with it, quiet. All right, let's see if I can get you guys in a little closer here. Can you guys see okay? I got you guys positioned right on the snubber uh, looking towards the front of the machine. Somebody's been in here before. I've got some hacksaw marks on a couple of these threads on this uh, turret ring. Uh, let's go ahead and dig in here. Let's try and determine if we do have a broken stud there. This one is. <laughs> oh boy. Yeah, didn't get tapped very far. It's not a, uh, or there's another stud broken in there. So that one's broken. That one looks good. That one looks good. This one looks good, but there's a lot of uh, dirt in there. So we've got one here, one here um, that we're going to try and extract. I have some left-handed drill bits somewhere. I might try that first. Um, I know they have a hacksaw here in the workshop, but uh, the blade on it's pretty dull. Let me put you guys on pause again. I'm going to go run and get some more uh, tools out of my bag. I don't want to waste a bunch of your time. Let's see if the left-hand drill bit method is going to work on this. Um, you have to go in reverse and you have to be centered in the stud. I'm not really getting anywhere. This drill bit's a little bit bent. I think the answer for this is going to be no.
This one is broken. Kind of uh, at an angle. So I go in a little crooked and guide that hole towards the center of the stud. And then square up. Well, I'm sure that that screw is probably seized in there pretty good. Because usually, you can just spin a broken stud right out. Left hand drill bit will just unthread it. That is not happening here. It is time to escalate the situation. I have a hacksaw with a pretty new blade on it. I got lucky here. So what we're going to do, just like these other ones, we're just going to saw across the broken stud. It may be easier for me to get a better line if we rotate the turret. So if we hold down the indexing lever, let's take this spring off too so we're not fighting that extra tension. Right there. We're just going to cut right through here. Get that pin release lever out of your face. should be enough and we're going to do the same right here so we're going to rotate around position this directly facing me and again baby steps until you get a groove started That's plenty far. <clears throat> Let's see. This might work. It might not. I don't know if my little pocket screwdriver is going to be uh, enough torque for this. <laughs> it worked. There you go. One broken stud removed from a turret ring. One down, one to go. Uh, let's see right here. <laughs> it worked. Look at that. Okay. You know what I forgot to do? <laughs> see, see what the hardware situation was here? Um, if they had new hardware, uh, oops, my fault. Uh, probably should check to see if you've got the screws to replace the ones that you're needing to replace. Hey, while we're in here, this, uh, uh, you guys can see it. Come here. Now this rubber bumper, where is my camera lens? Well, we're too close. That <laughs> rubber bumper shot, too. It's, uh... Yeah, let's see if they got another one of those too. 
I went ahead, rifled through the shop for a few minutes and managed to come up with some screws that will fit. The only questionable spot is going to be this one. It looks like somebody attempted to drill that out um, and re-thread it with a different diameter screw. Uh, we'll see if these screws will fit in there. The original diameter and threads are still down there so like they only half-ass did it <laughs> that might work out to our advantage uh, I don't know when we're making this up as we go along right now we're in uncharted territory oh I never did get that bumper stop yeah hold on pause we've got our turret ring back in I had to do some shady shit right here uh, they didn't have the right bumper uh, it was all loosey-goosey. I've got it retained with an X washer. Uh, I'm not super proud of it. But these are the parts that we have on hand. And my job is to try and find a way to make it work right now. So we've got our turret repositioned. Our number five center chute is facing the front of the machine. We're going to bring our basket and our halo back in. sure I don't hit all the lights because I like where they're at I don't want to have to reposition everything ooh this is an old school turret basket it has 12 holes in it instead of six those are not spare holes <laughs> we cannot use them as backups unfortunately Go ahead, if we set this, well, oh, I see. Here, you stay there for a sec. <coughs> Let's get our spider cam follower and spring back on. That's going to hold that pin release lever up a little more. Give us a little bit more wiggle room coming back in. All right. Turret center chute. Back in. Okay. And now that we've got that in, let's get... Oh, you guys can't see down here. Huh? It's kind of dark, too. It's still... Hi. Hi, everybody. I can see you. Let's get these bolts back in. Left side coming in. Oh, half inch speed wrench. Let's flip that. Then we can be lower than the spoon, and we won't be breaking our knuckles. Fun fact, the deck light serves multiple functions. Not only will it illuminate your pins during bowling, but you can also use it as a chair. Alright, that's nice and tight. Let's see if we can get a couple of these uh, bolts lined up. Tight squeeze in here. There's one. Let's see if we can do the other side of the five chute. We're going to get all of these uh, threaded in lightly first before we start tightening anything down why are you not lining up 
please, thank you. There it goes. I just felt it drop in. Well, we'll find out if these screws are long enough for that one uh, questionable hole. It's located right there now. Um, move you guys up a little bit. Yeah. And let's do a little flashlight maneuvering here. Now you guys can see uh, a whole lot better these screw holes on the back side. This is the one that was a little janky. Yep, that ain't gonna work. So we either need a short, larger diameter bolt or a longer, uh, well, let's, let's see here. I'm not a huge fan of recycling old hardware, but we have a longer, slightly different head screw here that's threading in we'll make it work we'll make it work cool um, and now the side that you guys can't see um, it's not that much different it's the same thing you're not really missing out on anything All right. Oop, that one's uh, chowdered too. Okay, so we have two bad screw holes here. Let's bring in the second old bolt. Longer, so we're hitting good threads further down. And the shitty thing is, now we need two different size Allen wrenches uh, when we go through, well, if anybody goes through and tightens these down in the future. Squeaky tight. This particular service stop does not have a full-time experienced technician on hand. Uh, I come over here once a week try and take care of their hot spots big things that are down um, I have a full-time job that I really love and I'm not giving that up for anything <laughs> yet I don't I don't want to be full-time on the road service technician that's not my uh, not my goal in life but I certainly don't mind lending a hand, helping out whenever possible. This is the trickiest spot. It's a good thing I bought these uh, ball tip Allen wrenches. Because I can go at it from an angle a little bit. You don't want to torque do a final torque with a ball tip, you'll snap the ball tip off. Fun fact, I've done it. Um, and once you leave a broken piece of Allen wrench inside the head of a screw, um, usually you're, you're, you're done. So I try to avoid that <clears throat> at all costs now. Please tighten up. That is very tight. All right, I'm gonna save you guys some of the headache. I'm gonna do the rest of this off camera. You get the idea. We're just tightening screws at this point. All the turret basket screws have been tightened down. Everything's torqued down really good. The uh, basket is not flippy floppy anymore. Let's go ahead and put our pivot bolt back in for our 
interlock probe. Need five sixteenths and three eighths. Double speed wrench time. Ooh, we went too fast. We flew off the handle there. I'm going to go medium tight. We don't have any binds. That's good. We're going to make this just a little bit tighter so it doesn't come loose in the future. Okay. Bring our spring back in. That's good. All right, let's move back towards move our flashlight around here. Point you guys back here. Maybe. I hope you don't get seasick. It's going to be a bumpy ride. Right there. Tap those in to start. There. Where is all oh, the hammers up on the uh, catwalk? That's okay. We'll grab it real quick. We'll kind of clean up as we go too. We need seven sixteenths to tighten that down. We need a hammer. Uh, the rest of this stuff I can get rid of. So let's clean our tools up a little bit too. Um, cool. Okay. Let me go fetch the hammer real quick. Tap that down. Check our adjustment. Ooh. I have some weird conduit run here in between the pair and. It makes for a tight fit. I am not a uh, small stature individual. <laughs> they didn't have much, uh, much of that rod extending out. So we'll kind of Put it at least back where we started, where we found it. This side's a little tougher. There we go. Oh, there was a little burr on the end of the rod and probably caused that when I used the punch to extract it. Should have checked that and filed the burr off before uh, we took extra swings at it. All right, let's hold our uh, indexing lever down here. All right, we need to go down a little bit. You guys can't really see. Let me uh, show you. We've got some interference right here. We're too high. Uh, the rod needs to go down. We need clearance under that center chute. So let's make some clearance under that center chute. That looks good. I've got uh, just shy of a quarter inch between the rod and the center chute here. We're going to go back and forth, make sure that we maintain that clearance. That looks good here. Coming back around, that looks great there. So if you're too low, you're going to hit here. If you're too high, you're going to hit 
the underside of that center chute. So that looks good. I'm going to rotate through and we're going to check on the 7 side. This looks okay so far. Go in. Yep, yep, we're good there. Okay. Awesome. This is looking fantastic. <laughs> Let's tighten our one remaining clamping bolt on this side. I'm going to call this done, but there is some more stuff I'm working on. Um, I'm gonna see if I can find some missing hardware to replace this stuff, but we don't need to film that. It's kind of boring. You guys get the idea of what we're what we're doing, what we accomplished today.